Station, Station, WTIM. Welcome in to the WTIM, your information station. My name is Tim Zalabak. Time now for the WTIM Morning Show. Thank you so much to our live stream sponsors, People's Bank and Trust, and Landmark of Taylorville. I got Chief Deputy of the Christian County Sheriff's Office, Jim Baker, in the studio with me today. Thank you so much for being here, Chief Deputy Baker. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get right into it today. You've uh, been, been a busy month for everyone, it seems. And uh, yeah, for you as well over there with the Christian County Sheriff's Office, it's harvest season. And what have you been seeing on the roads out there? People got to be careful. Yeah, sure. So as usual, it's kind of repetitive every September, October. We like to remind people that, uh, you know, with with harvest season, we've got a lot of farm equipment equipment running the roadways. Uh, as you travel up the roadways, you know, we want to keep in mind that those vehicles are moving a lot slower. You need to have patience and, you know, they're out there trying to make a living and they're going to be on the work sharing the roadways, you know, just like, like we are trying to get to, you know, one place to the other. Um, most recently we had a couple accidents involving those, um, with the, uh, drivers not, you know, paying attention to the speed of the vehicles. So yeah, you can uh, reach some higher speeds out there in the country roads and all of a sudden you meet a, a giant combine out there. So got to make sure you stay focused out there. It, it's definitely that season. I mean, uh, how, how many months, how long do we expect harvest season to run? I'm kind of, kind of new to this area. Out here. Yeah. So you can actually, uh, uh, foresee the harvest seasons kicking off mid-September. It'll run heavy in October and then kind of wrap up towards uh, the first week or two of November. Um, that's that I'm sure the farmers have a different opinion on how that plays out, but yeah, it's, it's basically the fall harvest season uh, that they'll, they'll run. All right. Uh, definitely keep your eyes out there. Slow moving vehicles for sure. Just guys moving from one field to the other, I'm sure. And uh, they don't want to get rear ended out there. So yes, definitely uh, make sure everything's safe out there. Definitely back to school season. Of course, what's the uh, sheriff's office doing uh, helping out with that? Yeah. So there again, September is a busy month between, you know, harvest and then we focus on kids and back in school. Um, I have several, uh, several of the smaller agencies. I know Taylorville has got their own resource officer, uh, but just like even with that, we, we re work with the smaller agencies throughout the county to go over their, uh, they're all required to do a, a active threat evaluation. Um, we work with those and, uh, reach out to them and do best case scenarios, you know, everything from where they're triage to the reunification locations, um, stuff like that. Busy with that. Um, I actually stepped out of a training that's, uh, I'm excited about today that is going on currently at the Tidal fire department. It involves the, everything from the pain of police department, ambulance services, Tidal fire, Tidal city, myself. Um, we're all collectively sitting in on a, a training to basically be prepared for um, not if a, a more of a win yeah. type situation and how to be best prepared for any critical instances within the school. Um, I've, I've been working with them, attending several uh, of the uh, directors at the schools there again, um, you know, with this type of season that schools getting back in session, there'll be more police presence, if anything, for, for uh, best practice training that'll be present. And like before, you know, we, we mentioned, um, we've, I've talked to the schools about putting that notifications out on the app. So that way they know if it's, you know, a planned event, you're being, you know, notified of that. So that's kind of what we've been doing in the last, uh, last few weeks, working with the schools, um, look forward to the next uh, few days. And I'm sure we'll have plenty to come out of this, uh, training that's currently going on when I leave here, I'll go back to that involves even the, you know, the, uh, EMA and the, uh, uh the uh, director at the uh, emergency services at the hospital, even sure. uh, got all hands on deck to try and basically uh, be prepared. It's really important that we do so because if you can, then you should. It seems like we have good uh, relationships with the different agencies around here. And now you're really putting together a plan in place. Parents and you all can have peace of mind a little bit, knowing that uh, and if an active threat does uh, you know, come into a school building, God forbid, you guys are going to know what to do. So, I mean, prior to this, uh, there was plans in place, I'm sure, but you really are, are moving forward with those plans. Yeah, I think it's continued education. And, and I, I I use my own term that it's kind of like plain chaos. You know, it's going to be chaos, but you want to have a plan together. And simply by all meeting to, together today to do this uh, training, the hospital reached out. Um, fortunately, Laura Pauly found a need for it to, and I would completely agree, it was a time that we could all work together to, you know, identify each other within one room, um, you know, and get acquainted with what each command post has got 
in anticipation and what they can be doing to, you know, to have a, uh, the best outcome possible. So really excited. I think everybody in there today with the introductions was excited about what they can take away from the training. Um, it is back to school season and we want to be prepared the best we can. Yeah. You said uh, chaos there. And when those situations might, might arise there, it's best to know that where, where your position will be for the, for the people that will be responding to it. So really good to hear that you guys are, are heading that. And that sounds really great. And that, that's a two day little training event for you guys. Yes. Very yes. Cool. Um, there again with police form where we have to get a, uh, a large amount of training over a calendar period of time. Uh, it's a continually clock. What they don't want is training to where you wait, you know, 36 months and dump all your training in. It's actually a scheduled with police reform was a great thing that come out of it. There was a lot of negative things with the safety act. Um, I feel that with the new safety act, when it comes to training with the officers, it's a great thing because mm -hmm. instead of postponing, you, you actually have a rolling calendar to where you get this training and today and tomorrow with the two day training, the training that's being provided um, is a, a, a very well put together piece of training that the police fire institute recognizes the fire department uh, the sheriff's office uh, obviously through our training and standards boards the police department is going to get recognition for it so really excited to see what what comes of that absolutely you kind of just mentioned it right there uh safety act we, we wanted to talk about that a little bit today and we were talking during the break pre-trial releases there this started on the 18th of september and we talked about it before Everyone was kind of confused on what it was going to look like, but we're going to start to see what it looks like now. And now you're, you're going to have some trained deputies out there. It's good to hear that training's happening. It's really coming to fruition. Tell me a little bit about what today's looking like. Yeah. So uh, just like before, uh, we we talked about it. We, pre we, we prepared for it to be implemented on the 18th. And, you know, everybody focused on what now qualifies for being detained. And we, we've, we've was, you know, instructed on our flow charts. We found out which ones qualify and don't qualify. And you get, you navigate that part of it. And now today, um, everybody wants to know, we know what's going on after the 18th with the uh, charges that are detainable, but what, what left it in the a big question in the air was what about these select individuals that were currently housed within the Christie County facility? where do they qualify? And uh, over the last few days, I have reached out and spoke with the state's attorney, um, working with the public defender. Everybody's got a different take of what those previously arrested charges will look like. Ultimately, it's going to be up to the, the court docket and the judges to decide how many um, are going to be released. And as of today, um, you know, we we have a very busy day at the sheriff's office today. We are actually bringing 26 of the 42 over to the courthouse. Um, I believe was the last number I was informed that was on the docket. 26 individuals will go before the courts and try to plead their you know their 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 reasoning of why they should be released. And at the end of the day, we'll see today how many of those um, I did get a projection from the state's attorney him and I worked together and went through what the charges were there again prior to September 18th these were detainable bondable charges now with pretrial release um, there's a large list of people that says you know well if it doesn't qualify for me to be in here today on the 19th and it happened a month ago can I get out and so that's what that's going to look like. Okay. So that, that's the question. Uh, well, the question was before what's detainable and what's not detainable. You guys kind of got that. But now the question for the 26 people coming before the court today, um, hey, I did this, but now according to the legislation, you can't hold me for this. That's that's exactly it. Okay. And and it's going to be whether or not, um, you know, that some of those would be questionable as we went through the list of the 42. Some of them was a check mark. This no longer clearly this person will be let out. Um, numerous, uh, of a, a large amount of these would be, a, have a question mark next to it because you've got to navigate the, the stipulation as okay. If it's, uh, a detainable offense, is it detainable because it's a threat to the public or a threat to a specific individual where it may not be detainable unless they can articulate that it's a threat to a particular individual. So then they may be able to be held without uh, pre-trial release and, and, and 
they just won't have bond. So now. one one question I had was um if they're a threat to a specific person that's detainable but if they're a threat to the community that's not detainable. So yes, so some of it you have to say you look at classification, you can have a class X, class X felony that no longer is detainable unless the officer articulates is this a threat to um, an individual. Okay. Obviously a class X felony would be, you know, we 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 consider that it's a a threat to the community or a safety issue to the community. But if you can narrow it down and say, hey, this is actually a threat to an individual, now it might be something where they're being detained without bond. Okay. So those are the things that of these uh, these individuals that we currently have housed, um, we're going to have to figure out how many of those are going to be released. And I think at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, we'll know, um, you know, it's looks like to me that, that there's the, the front door of the sheriff's office is going to swing open quite a bit, um, you know, to, to, to figure out who's, who's no longer in jail with a waiting bond and their, their pretrial release will kick in and, and be released. Very interesting to see how this will play out. Sounds like the deputies are going to be having a lot more legwork here, just uh, trying to convince uh, where that threat lies. So uh, we're going to talk more about this after the break here on the WTIM Morning Show. Sitting down with Chief Deputy of the Christian County Sheriff's Office, Jim Baker, right now. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be talking more about the Safety Act when we come back here on the WTIM Morning Show. Your information station, WTIM. This is Will Perkins with Taylorville Community Credit Union. Are you looking for a great CD rate? If you are, TCCU has just what you are looking for. We are currently offering a seven-month share certificate special with an annual percentage yield of 4.35% and a minimum deposit of $1,000. This great rate is for a limited time. For more information, please contact us at any of our convenient locations or online at tccu.org. Dividends will be compounded monthly. A penalty for early withdrawal may be imposed. Fees could reduce earnings on the account. Member NCUA. There's only one Central Illinois radio station that brings you the memories of the 60s and early 70s as you are cruising down the streets of your hometown. The dial position is 98.3 FM. The station is 98.3 WSVZ. From Macon to Vandalia and I-55 to I-57, cruising 98.3 plays the hits from early Elvis in the 60s to the British invasion of the Beatles, Herman's Hermits, and many more from the 1960s. Then we swing into the early half of the 1970s with artists like the Guess Who, the Doobie Brothers, and Elton John. Every song brings back something you remember about growing up. Set a button and crank up the station. Playing good time rock and roll from the Tower of Power. Cruising 98.3 WSV. Jim Stepp is the owner of Central Illinois Asphalt in Taylorville. With over 40 years in the asphalt paving business, he's still at it today, based in Taylorville. Don't trust fly-by-night pavers claiming they've got extra asphalt, then play gotcha. Call Jim Stepp at Central Illinois Asphalt for asphalt repair and sealing and make your driveway or parking lot dust-free with recycled asphalt and environmentally friendly sealer that doesn't contain coal tar and other harmful things to your health. Reach Jim by Googling Central Illinois Asphalt Taylorville for quality work at fair prices. He's your local paver with over 40 years experience. It's time to think farm safety. Accidents involving tractors account for more farm deaths than any other cause. Most fatalities are related to rollovers and runovers. Statistically, it's the farm operator himself who is at greatest risk. This week and every week in 2023, think and practice safety first. Bob Ridings, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Ford, 8 North Locust in Pena. Come see the country boys in the country. Hi, this is Andrea Bach from the Christian County YMCA, where it's all about youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. Find out about our great programs and activities at your local YMCA by clicking our icon on the obituary page of TaylorvilleDailyNews.com. Fall means attending your favorite festivals and bonfires. Taylorville Care Center can help get you back to doing what you want, like attending a local fall festival. Find out more by clicking their icon at TaylorvilleDailyNews.com. Your information station, WTIM. 
Welcome back to the WTIM Morning Show. My name is Tim Zalabak. Joining me today on the WTIM Morning Show is Chief Deputy Jim Baker of the Christian County Sheriff's Office. We've been talking a little bit about accidents uh, on the farm roads today. It's harvest season, so make sure to stay, uh, keep your eyes up and don't uh, move too fast when those combines are moving. It's back to school season. They are getting some great plans ready for uh, some actionable what, what, what word am I thinking of here? For some active threat scenarios there, so always good to be prepared on that. Now we're talking about some pre-trial release. Safety Act just came into effect this September 18th. Chief Deputy Jim Baker, really an expert on it today, and uh, we're happy to be talking to him. It's just some new uh, some new operations for your deputies out there. We talk about a flow chart. We talk about the uh, the steps you have to go to in order to find out whether it is detainable or non-detainable offense. What, what have your deputies been, uh, how have they been taking to it? So basically, once we got everybody on the same page of what the process is going to look like, um, they they you know adapted as expected. Um, some of them, you know, as as we get these these scenarios that pull up, we we're all in agreement that the best case scenario is to keep everybody involved. Everything from phone calls to the state's attorney, who um, you know is available twenty four seven, is no different than myself. Uh, the deputies work in the road. They'll start out with command staff, work their way up. And, you know, I have had one or two phone calls where even myself uh, sitting at home, we look at it, figure out where it's at on the flow chart, maybe uh, reach out to the state's attorney and give him the details and, and go from there. Um, it's, it's definitely something that's, it's, it's a new learning curve and we're just, you know, working together to get through it. This sounds like it's going to be taking a lot more communication, a lot more organization on the side of, you know, we talked a little bit with Chief uh, Wheeler of Taylorville the, the other day, and he talked about uh, needing to remember the frequent flyers because you're making cases as to why this person will offend again and why this person needs to, uh, they can't be out on the street. So is there a lot more of that? Is there a lot more keeping track of who's who and, and instead of just, you know, this is the crime, this is what they did, and, and there you go. Yeah, so that's where a lot of times the the state's attorney is going to have access to trying to figure out their previous convictions or their, you know, you, you may have one. We're actually talking with the judge, the uh, state's attorney about some type of available sheet uh, uh, available to the dispatch to where we can keep track of that because you're going to get people that's going to be out on uh, a notice to appear and they may commit a crime. They get a notice to appear and before they make it to their next, court date, they may commit that crime again. And you're going to have, you know, we're, we're talking with the, uh, with the court circuit about how we can, whether that looks like we may end up working with the state police and putting that on their criminal record to where they have a, you know, uh, a log or entry that that person's out on pretrial release for, you know, let's say theft, they commit the theft again. And then maybe maybe they step it up from a theft, uh, uh, um, a commercial theft or a uh, uh, retail theft and bump it up to a burglary. They're going to want to know that, especially if it takes place prior to, you know, their quote notice to appear. So, yeah, we, we have spoke with the uh, some of the, the what they call the leads, the database to where we can monitor and keep track of that. And it'll be readily available when you make that arrest. Um, the state's attorney and the arresting officer can work together to decide whether or not it is something that they want to detain them, um, you know, without bond. Okay. All right. And so we're learning more about the uh, Safety Act pre-trial release. It's all really coming into effect today. Uh, some some big decisions will be made here in Christian County. So we're, uh, we're going to be looking out for that. Chief Deputy Baker, we're just about out of time here, but we did talk about uh, back to school plans for for actionable th for action threats. Why do I keep saying action threats? It's active threats. Okay. And uh, for for anything for testing or anything you guys are, are training. Uh, the parents can uh, be let know about that. How, how can they be let know? Sure. Um, I'll go back to the fact that we really pushed the idea of the public safety app. Um, the sheriff's office has initiated that a couple months ago, still pushing um, the download of it. You can get it at the Apple store, um, the QR code off the sheriff's office. And if they have any questions, they can call in, ask to speak to me at the sheriff's office. And there again, it's just a way to communicate, and bridge, bridge the gap of communication between the sheriff's office and uh, the general public. I, I've recently talked to Jeff Stoner with EMA. We're going to be working together to uh, get the apps out and, and go from there. 
perfect. I got the app and uh, I, I I got notified of a road closure earlier this week. So it is definitely one to add. So thank you so much, Chief Deputy Jim Baker, for coming in with us today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. That's Chief Deputy of the Christian County Sheriff's Office, Jim Baker. We thank him so much for coming in today. Again, that's all more knowledgeable about the Safety Act. My name's Tim Zalback. You are listening to the WTIM Morning Show. Your information station, WTIM. But that's RN News. I'm Rich Thomason. A Detroit car makers announced more layoffs. They blame on fallout from the UAW strike. GM has idled a plant in Kansas with 2,000 workers because of a lack of parts. It means there's no work for those employees. Applications for unemployment benefits fell to an eight-month low last week. Claims tumbled by 20,000 to 201,000 for the week ending September 16th. The Biden administration is extending special protective status to roughly 470,000 Venezuelans in the U.S. illegally. It will make it easier for them to get work permits. And Texas Governor Greg Abbott has sent crews to repair razor wire along the border. It's a barrier that he says was cut by the Biden administration. On Wall Street,